Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to showing off the 3D printer that I bought. I got it from eBay and as you can see here I bought it from the UK stock. It's the Creality CR10S. I have been looking for a 3D printer for quite some time now and it's actually finally time to get it assembled and together. It arrived after just a couple of days and I have been printing like mad. So let's get going and we will see what was included in the package and how I assembled it. If you want to buy anything like this there is links down below in the description. It comes really nicely packaged and no problem whatsoever on the merchandise. No damage could be seen and I can't ask for anything better when it comes to the packaging. Contents of the box, screws, USB cable, all the tools including another snipper, resolution card, the tool to remove it, the stuff, more parts and most likely to assemble the frame, the extrusion stopper or feeler, that's the holder for the spools, that's that one, information stick, I'm guessing this is a USB memory card with all the manuals on. Some PLA, not much though, white as well. Extrude filament and thing. And the tool to clean the nozzle with. And that's really good to have. We also have this nice little unit. And oh. Nice. It's actually time to assemble it and that will be really neat to see how it goes. I'm guessing this one will be sitting on here. It's important to tighten the screws or the motors to the screws because they are coming loose from the start. So let's start to assemble the said frame. There are two M6 screws on each end. Just make sure that you tighten or you get the said end on the right correct way. Time for the brackets on the side and that's rather easy, it's just a matter of lining them up, putting them into place and when you start to screw them, you can see that the end or the inside actually turns and that will make sure that it sticks together. Just make sure that this one turns around. The filament sensor is in put into place. And then it's just a matter to start to hook up the electronics parts. They are all nicely labeled, so it's just a matter of following the correct namings.
For further instructions on how to set this up, there is plenty of videos on YouTube and this is not a how-to video in that sense. So after I have been running this 3D printer for quite a while now, it's time to actually talk a little bit about it. The assembly process was rather easy, it was just a matter of assembling the sides here and getting it all up and running. If you follow the instructions you will get running. But the thing that it did not tell about is how do you calibrate some of the parts because even though it did take 20 minutes to set up and get going, not everything was calibrated. For instance, this build plate here, it was wobbly and I could move it several millimeters. So basically what you have to do is, I suggest that you remove the build plate, you turn it over and on the underside you have these wheels that you need to align. When you are pressing those to the side, you can align them and get this very, very firm and without any movement at all. And when that's done, it's so much easier to actually align the build plate against this nozzle here. That's one of the things and there is plenty of videos on YouTube about this. The other thing is that the build plate is not flat. Uh, this is something that many people have said before and I will say as well and that it seems like the glass or the aluminium build plate itself is a little bit where the middle is lower than the ends. To get that sorted it's rather simple to do. I like the clips that you have on the side. You lift it up and underneath here you add a couple of paper pieces. You do not need much more than that. In my case, I took two paper pieces in the middle here and stuck on two each other. And that almost solved the problem. I'm running tape at the moment and you can print PLA and stuff like that on the glass itself if you have some kind of adhesive. I have not tried that yet, but we'll do that soon. And my tape is kind of scuffed up, but it do work for the uh, more thicker stuff. So. I tend to not change it out until I actually need to do it. This tape here is kind of useless so it can be removed now. Uh, if you wait too long to remove the tape, the residue of the tape will stick to the plate rather hard. It's easy to remove with thinner or some kind of other lacquer remover. So don't worry about that since you have a glass underneath. I did buy a lot of PLA for it and I have al already almost used up the first black one kilo that I bought and I have printed tons of things. For instance these Raspberry Pi holders. I think I printed four of them already uh, because I have a lot of Raspberry Pis and they protect them so nicely so it's worth having. I have also printed several Longmon holders that are holding my Longmons to the battery banks and that's really neat as well. I have also printed rather large boxes that will be holding screens and Raspberry Pis inside. This one is a rough print for testing and I'm not adding added all the buttons and charge things and stuff like that yet but it's still it's so easy to get something printing and you can get a prototype within a couple of hours and that's really nice this is a CR 10 S I bought the S model just because I didn't want to fiddle around and I wanted the extra stuff directly and the S model comes with the, the part that actually senses if you have any spool or PLA or filament left 
it's really easy to create that one yourself but if you don't want to you get it on say you also get the second Z axis on the side here and that's really neat to have uh, I read some about it and people tend to say that if you don't have it when you go to the top it starts to lean and it can even lean in the bottom so it gets a little bit uneven so that extra hundred bucks for me it's worth it I think I paid almost 500 bucks for it it's worth mentioning that I have only spent 20, 25, 30 minutes at tops to get this going and after that I have been printing almost one kilo of filament already and that's quite a few hours as you can see I have the printer in the middle here I have my CNC machine there and I have the printer here um, it's not viable to have a 3D printer in this type of condition in the long term so I need to build some kind of case around it that will make sure that dust does not enter and I can keep the heat a little bit better I do like the machine because it's big you can buy the ones with bigger plates but 30 by 30 by 40 is big enough for me currently so I will do build videos regarding the case because I have an idea about that and at the same time I will build a case for the CNC router too. If you want a 3D printer like this one, I highly recommend this one. It's very easy to get going as a new beginner. It's not the cheapest printer out there, but to me and to many reviews that I have seen on YouTube, it seemed to be one of the better printer for the price. And since it was so easy to set up and it has been running flawlessly for me so far, I do recommend it. I you have affiliated links down below. Thank you for watching, and I see you next time. Bye.